So a few days ago, I was at my storage unit and I came across this box. It was the box of a Shimano DC reel that I completely forgot I had. Now, unfortunately, the reel was not in the box and even after searching for it for a while, I couldn't find it. I even tried to remember if I sold it, but oh well, if I do find it, I will make a video about it. But seeing that reel box made me take an inventory of all the DC reels that I still have and I figured I would make a video on them because I'm sure a lot of you don't even know some of these reels even existed. Now for this video I'm going to start with the newest reel first and work my way back to the oldest. So let's get started. So of course that means we begin with the new and notorious 2024 Metanium DC. It's a reel that many have been anticipating for years, but when it came out, it was an enigma. It offered the same IDC5 brakes as several other Shimano DC reels, but the firmware and programming seemed to make it less user-friendly than the previous model. But on the upside, if you are able to master it, the casting performance seems to have a higher ceiling than the other DC reels sharing the same brakes. In fact, this reel easily dispatched not only the previous Metanium DC in a cast battle, it also dispatched the non-DC Metanium MGL as well. A couple of other notable things about this reel is that it's the smallest and lightest low profile DC reel yet. So that brings us to the previous smallest and lightest low profile DC reel, the 2022 SLX DC XT. And let me tell you, this reel is an absolute gem. It made me forget about my previous favorite DC reel, the 2017 Scorpion DC. And that's because this reel shares the same frame, but Shimano modified it to be smaller more compact and also reduce the weight. This reel also has the IDC5 brakes like many others, but when you combine it with the new MGL3 spool that is one of the lightest DC spools ever, the performance and casting range on this reel is huge. It can easily bait finesse, but also make long bomb casts of heavier lures. The brake firmware of this reel is very user friendly so the performance is easily accessible for beginners. And speaking of beginners, due to the current favorable exchange rate, this reel is an absolute steal right now. In fact, I recommend it to anyone as their first DC reel, but it will also satisfy the more experienced user as well because it's just that good. Next up is the 2021 Scorpion 150 DC. And as you can see, this reel is absolutely stunning. The two-tone color scheme with just the right amount of red accents make this the best looking DC reel in my opinion. Now this particular Scorpion DC also features the popular IDC5 brakes, but it's combined with a bigger 150 capacity MGL2 spool. And just like most other reels that use the IDC5 braking, the firmware and programming make the awesome casting performance of this reel very accessible to the beginner user. And the casting range is also much better than I expected when I tested it as it handled upper end BFS lures surprisingly well. This reel reminds me of the SLX DC XT, but it holds much more line and of course it's bigger and heavier. So if you're looking for a budget friendly DC reel with good line capacity, I definitely recommend the 2021 Scorpion 150 DC. So next is the 2020 JDM SLX DC 70. A reel that got a lot of hype and attention back in 2020 at the Japanese fishing shows. And that's because it was the first affordable DC reel for the Japanese market. And also because Shimano pro staffer Takuma Hata released a video showing us just how far this reel could cast. 
as he was hitting a bunch of casts that were very close to the 100 yard mark. Now this reel differs from its American counterpart because its spool was modified to hold less line, hence the 70 designation. And also the IDC4 brakes had a different firmware and programming versus the American SLX DC. Now I don't think too many Americans have realized this reel existed, but it must have been a popular seller in Japan because last year they came out with a new updated model. And that model currently is the cheapest new DC reel you can buy today due to the great exchange rate. So that means next up is the US market SLX DC150. A hugely popular reel for Shimano America due to its sub $200 price when it came out. In fact, this reel may be the first DC reel for a lot of anglers because of that low price point. Now, other than its low price, some other notable things about this reel is that it features a modified SLX frame that Shimano does not cross platform with any other reel line. Now, this budget friendly DC reel actually has the same spool and IDC4 brakes of the much more expensive Corrado DC. And in fact, after doing some side by side cast testing, they perform pretty much the same. And that's probably why Shimano USA released this reel one year after the Corrado DC. So that brings us to the mighty 2018 Corrado 150 DC. Now when this reel was announced back in 2018 at iCast, I don't remember any fishing reel that caused as much buzz and hype in the American market than this reel. And that's because of two things. Number one, the Corrado name, and number two, the super low cost compared to previous DC reels that sold in America. So basically, Shimano took the popular Corrado 200K frame and modified it to hold the IDC4 brake system. Now I will say that when I tested this reel several years ago, I was not impressed. The brakes did not seem very DC-like compared to other DC reels that I already owned. But that was until I started matching up the right line with the right line mode. That completely changed my opinion on the Corrado DC as it became much more user friendly. Now because this reel was so popular for Shimano, I'm pretty sure they will come out with a newer model, maybe even this year. So let's cross our fingers. So this brings us to my previous favorite DC reel, the Sinister 2017 Scorpion DC100. It became my favorite DC reel due to its use of the Corrado 200i frame that was modified to palm a little smaller. Plus I love shiny deep black reels with red accents. Now the 17 Scorpion DC was given the 100 designation due to its modified spool that held us line versus the Scorpion 200 at the time. This reel also featured the IDC5 brakes that gave it awesome casting performance, but the firmware and tune of its brakes made it very accessible and user friendly to beginners. In fact, I found the casting was pretty much equal to the much more expensive 2015 Metanium DC at the time which in my opinion made it a huge performance bargain as it sold for about the same price as the Corrado DC. Now of course this reel has been replaced by the new Scorpion 150 DC that is bigger, heavier, and has more line capacity. But because of its smaller palming and better thumb bar, I prefer this reel to the new reel. And as I mentioned before, the new SLX DC XT became my favorite DC reel due to it being even smaller and even lighter. So that brings us to the infamous 2016 Antares DC, the top of the top when it came to DC reels at the time. This reel came with a lot of expectations because it took 10 years for Shimano to replace the old reel with this one. 
and Shimano did release some videos of his casting ability as pro staffer Jim Murata recorded a 109 meter cast with a 5 8 ounce casting plug in a controlled setting. Now for us Americans that equates to about 120 yards. Now that beat the non DC Antares by about 10 yards. Now being the flagship, the 16 Antares featured all of Shimano's best technology at the time including an MGL2 spool and the top of the line 4x8 DC brakes that feature an extreme distance mode. And with this reel Shimano also removed the spool tension knob and placed the adjustment inside the reel. And because of this I would say it's not very beginner friendly at all. You have to keep on your toes with this reel but if you can master it when it comes to long distance casting of heavy lures this reel couldn't be touched. When casting a 3 quarter ounce rattle trap in a cast battle, this reel destroyed all the competition without breaking a sweat. But due to its overly large size and somewhat heavy weight, I rarely use the reel for the type of fishing that I do. But it's a moot point now because it was replaced by a new model in 2020. So now we get to the 2015 Metanium DC. This is the second generation of Metanium DC and it represented a big leap forward versus the older model in pretty much every way. Now at the time of its release, Shimano was claiming it could dip into finesse lure weights as low as 3 sixteenths of an ounce in casting as well as pitching. Now I found that it could go as little as 1 eighth of an ounce in cast testing. I believe back in 2015, it was also the lightest DC reel ever coming in at just under 7 ounces. But since this was a quote unquote mid-range DC reel that was lower than the top of the line and Terry's, Shimano gave this reel the IDC5 brakes that were tuned for all around use. The brakes were very user friendly and accessible for beginners and apparently were programmed to work even with low spool speed techniques like pitching. So it really was a jack of all trades type of reel that could do it all. Now one last thing of note, owners do report this reel as having the loudest DC sound. So this next reel is a reel most of you probably didn't know existed and it's an absolute legend that only the enthusiasts will remember. That is the one of a kind 2012 first generation Exence DC, a reel that was designed for targeting sea bass. Now this reel is a unicorn in several ways as it had several features that were way ahead of its time. Now it used an older frame but Shimano retrofitted the X-Ship technology into it. It also has an engraved badge instead of a sticker and it had a drag clicker way back in 2012. But what really made this reel special was its one of a kind DC brake system that is not found in any other DC reel. That system is called the IDC Plus. Now the IDC Plus had settings that no other DC brake system had back then. It had a total of 7 settings, 4 of them for braid, 1 for fluorocarbon, 1 for big baits, and it had a special night mode that stopped the spool for you when the lure hit the water, even with the loose spool tension. That's because I guess most sea bass fishing happens at night and you can't see when the lure hits the water to stop the spool with your thumb. Now I did a casting video for this reel a few years ago and the special night mode setting actually works. Now as far as casting distance it was very comparable to the 15 Metanium DC and the 17 Scorpion DC so it's no slouch when it comes to long bombing. So when you combine that with its all metal construction can you believe this reel went for as low as $212 back in the day depending on the exchange rate? Now it's been since replaced by the Exence DC SS, but I tested that reel and the old reel is much better. And when you combine all these things together, that's what makes this reel a legend. So now we get to the granddaddy and another legendary reel, the mighty 2007 Calais DC. This reel was the second ever DC reel and the first ever low profile DC reel which became Shimano's flagship top of the top reel. Because of that Shimano spared no expense and gave the Calais DC all its best technology at the time which included the introduction of the most advanced 4x8 DC brakes that featured for the first time ever the extreme distance mode. 
It also had an all metal construction that was chrome nickel plated and a lot of components that were special only to the Calais, like its drag star that featured a black trim piece with holes ported in it, a very intricate spool tension knob that had very positive micro clicks, and a handle that was special only to the Calais DC. Now all this came at an unbelievable price of $650 back in 2007. Now of course this reel was known for its very long casting abilities. And there's a very credible source in Japan that said this reel's counterpart, the 2007 Antares DC, made a cast of 118 meters with a 5 8 ounce plug. So that's almost 130 yards. Now I personally made a video where I hit 99 yards a couple of times using a one ounce metal jig. Now the Calais DC was my dream reel for the longest time, but when I got it, it was so big and so heavy that I rarely used it. The reel weighs almost 10 ounces before even spooling it up with line. You know what they say, don't ever meet your heroes. So I'm going to finish off this video by talking about some DC reels I've sold and some noticeably absent DC reels. Now I did have a Conquest 50 DC for a short time before I sold it. Now it was a cool little reel but I'm not a fan of round reels. And that's why I've never even considered buying any of the other Conquest DCs. But with that being said, I have been keeping my eye on the prices of the only Shimano DC BFS reel ever, the Cardiff 50 DC, but unfortunately people are still asking crazy money for them. And that brings us to the current 2020 Antares DC, a reel that I was really excited about when information was first leaked about it. It showed a DC reel that was supposed to be extremely small and compact, and I was totally planning on getting one, but after it was released, it was definitely not as small as I hoped it would be. In fact, the reel is still very big. And also the fact that the Japanese YouTuber stated that the old 2016 model cast it farther, there was no real benefit of spending $500 to buy one. And finally, once again, I did find the box of a DC reel that I completely forgot I had. And if I can manage to find it, I will do a video showcasing it for you guys. So there we go guys, a video of all the Shimano DC reels I currently own. Thanks a lot.